All right. Good morning, or actually, good afternoon. Uh, today, we are going to go over the drill press. And the drill press is a great tool to use for drilling boring holes. And it is a deceptive machine. This is a machine that, uh, if you're not really paying attention to what's going on around you, you can get hurt with this machine. Uh, I have uh, heard stories about individuals getting their uh, necklaces, earbuds, and stuff like that all caught in there. And so that is a uh, kind of a bad thing. You don't want to get your hair caught in here on the drill press because if you do, it could, uh, it could pull your hair out along with your scalp. <sighs> Notice that I am wearing my safety goggles and... Uh, um, uh, so safety goggles are always important. You always got to wear them. If you catch me with my safety goggles uh, off, and you can tell by like I got these little side shields on, you got to say something. All right. So uh, parts of the drill press. Let's see here. I'm gonna disconnect this here, and I'm gonna walk around and show you kind of what things are. Like. Okay. So right here, back here is the motor. Okay, this is what actually spins the quill or the chuck down here. Um, we have a shield that can out in front of here. We have a variable control, a uh, speed control wheel here. And that is also indicated by this speed indicator right here. This wheel, you only crank when the machine is running. We generally just leave it alone. I usually leave it set to about 1200 RPM, okay? Um, this section right here, this is the column or the post, and it goes all the way down to the floor. And then this is the table right here, okay, where my hand is at. Down here where my foot is tapping on, that is the base, and it's bolted to the floor. Right here is the on and off switch. Rotate this way, turns it on. Rotate it the other way, it's off. This little threaded rod right here, this is the depth stop. And these two nuts are called jam nuts and you turn them against each other to lock it in place. And then when you lower the, the, uh, the feed lever down, which is what I just hit here, this is the feed lever and it stops, okay? And this, let me see, where are we? this is a three jaw chuck. And this area, it's gonna be hard for me to point. I'm gonna get my finger right in here. That is the quill, and that's what goes up inside the body of the uh, drill press. Now, um, drill presses are, uh, are great, but the problem with them is, is that they have a lot of power to them, and they're very torquey. And um, they, can, uh, they can grab hair, like I said, they can grab necklaces, um, they can grab earbuds, you know, you don't want to get pulled in with this machine because what I have heard at times, I've never seen it, and I hope I never do. Uh, this is the machine where you want to definitely tuck those things out of the way and so that you don't get your body pulled into the machine. It'll literally, uh, it'll pull you into it and it ain't going to stop. Um, if you're wearing like a, an identification tag like people wear around their waist or their neck, I mean, um, that can pull you into it. Hopefully you have breakaway ones because those are the ones you want. I had a student of mine uh, who worked out in the construction trades and was telling me he was using a table saw and had the, necklace, or the, uh, the ID necklace tag on and it got wrapped up in the table saw and he was lucky. It was the breakaway kind of breaks away from the back of his neck because uh, it would have pulled him right into it and would have killed him, just like that. So um, this machine, if your hair gets wrapped up in it, what it does is it literally will grab all the hair and it'll pull the root of your hair along with the flesh out and have a big bald spot on your head. Yeah, that should make you cringe. So if you have long hair or necklaces or anything like that, or even the dilemma bobbers on your sweatshirt, you know, the little tie strings on your sweatshirt, those things need to be tucked in. Now, if your hair, um, you can put a 
bandana on. You can cut your hair, you can tie your hair back in a bandana, you can tie it in, or you can tuck it into the back of your shirt. You can use a string, you can use a little band, you can use a scrunchie. It's gotta be back and, and out of the way. We don't want to, we don't want to get caught up in this machine. Okay. Um, so there are many different types of drill bits that we use. And when you think of a drill bit, that's what you think of as a drill bit. Um, this is actually one that's meant to go into a number two Morris taper. This is a big taper here. Hard to see, but it's skinnier here and thicker here, so it binds. And it goes up into this portion of the spindle right here. Now, my spindle, this is a number one Morris taper. I think this is a number two or a number three Morris taper. And this is a big drill bit. This drill bit actually measures one and 13 30 seconds. So it's really big, okay? And, uh, but this is also probably a pretty expensive drill bit. I don't know how much this drill bit would cost nowadays, but I would suspect this drill bit would be anywhere probably in the $100 range, easy, for one size drill bit. This type of drill bit is called a uh, high-speed twist drill, okay? The parts of it <laughs> are just like this drill bit here. Um, this one's about a half inch in diameter. So in other words, from here, this side to this side is a half inch. And the parts of this bit are called, this is the shank right here. These are the flutes. And a lot of people think this is what's doing the cutting. It's not. What's doing the cutting is right here. This is the blade of the drill bit. And this thing spins this way. And this little section here is pressed down with the material and it gets caught up in the flutes. The flutes lift the chips up and out and away. Now, these type of drill bits are designed for drilling holes in multiple types of materials. You can drill uh, in hard materials like metal, uh, hard plastics, uh, hardwoods. Yes, yeah, so when you think of drill bits, this is generally what you think about. I'm going to show you a couple other drill bits a little later on that are designed to drill um, in softer materials. But when you think of drill bits, this is generally what you think of. All right, so to install the drill bit, you have a three jaw chuck. And some of you have what's called keyless chucks. Okay, and this chuck, if you look here, see that thing coming down? These are three jaws. So essentially what it's doing is, pretend my, these three fingers are coming down and they grab evenly, okay? So whenever you clamp on the shank of a drill bit, you wanna clamp on the smooth portion. You do not want the jaws of the chuck to clamp on the flutes. You'll ruin the drill bit if you do that, okay? So I'm gonna show you an example here. If you look, and it's kind of hard to see, but I'm not, I'm not on the flutes down here, but if I, I can shove this way up in here. You don't wanna shove this way up and in, because you'll end up breaking the drill bit. Okay, so I spin this with my hand until the jaws come down. And you wanna wiggle the drill bit as you're tightening it up and it'll stop moving, okay? That way you know that it is um, it's centered. But I'm gonna do something on purpose here to show you. If you ever set a drill bit up and you go to turn it on, you should always spin it first. Before you spin it, you should, or before you turn it on, you should spin it. If you drill with that drill bit, you see how it's wobbling all over the place? Oh, by the way, keep all body parts four inches away from any moving objects. I forgot to mention that to you on the bandsaw. That's for all the machines that I'm going to be teaching you here soon. Okay. But if it, your bit is wobbling around like this, you've got to stop. Do not go. Do not proceed to drill a hole. You are going to ruin your project. You're going to ruin the drill bit, and there's a really good chance you're going to get hurt. Okay. All right, so you must use a clamping block. This is a clamping block. This is used to hold your material down to this and you can hold the material here with this, okay? 
You also must use a backing board. Three reasons why we use a backing board. One is to protect the cutter, okay? Right here, cutter, right here. Two is to protect the table. We don't want to drill a hole in my tabletop down here. You drill a hole in my tabletop, I'm going to send you a $300 bill. And then you get a useless piece of steel and I get a new tabletop, okay? And three, it prevents splintering. Splintering is coming out the backside. You see how it gets all roughed up like this? You, what you want is your holes to look like this here out of the backside of the material. You don't want them to look like this. See all the chunks and stuff that's out of here, and the chunks here. And I'm gonna show that to you and how that is created. Okay, so install the cutter, wiggle until the jaws come down. Check here, make sure that the flutes are, uh, or the jaws of the chuck are not on the flutes. And you tighten all three holes, one, Two, three, turn it on. Ah, look at that, see how nice that spins? There lies the deception right there. You gotta make sure you shut this machine off at the end of the day or when you're done using it. Because when the shop gets rolling and it gets awful noisy and you don't want someone to get caught up in that thing. That can catch sweatshirts, all sorts of things, okay? That ain't good. And you can get hurt. I don't want you to get hurt. You're my kids, I don't care about it. All right, so if you are in class, or when you are in class, if you or anybody get hurt, you must tell me. I don't care. You have to say something. If it's a little sliver, I need to know, okay? because I don't want you to get hurt. And I don't want you to get an infection. Okay, those things can happen. Now, um, if you see somebody get hurt, and a lot of people, what a lot of people will do is they do the old fight or flight thing. And usually what they do is the flight. They hurt themselves and they realize it and they go, oh, and then they go run off and they try and they hide. And they go and they hide. And then all of a sudden it's something like this. And then they go hide again. If you see somebody get hurt, you got to come and say something to me. Okay. So when I was back in college, there was this guy who always came late to class. The professor um, said, hey, you guys, if you come to class on time, I'll give you guys all extra credit. Well, little did I know that the professor was like, <laughs> it, it never happens. I've never given it. And there was this one guy. There's always that one guy that comes late to class. So I'm telling you now, come to class, make sure you're here on time. Last period, I had a guy who came late to class. I didn't let him in because he's got to watch the whole video now. And he's got to uh, um, come prepared uh, with the notes and all that stuff. So he'll be expected to take notes. All right, so this guy um, who came late to class, and he missed critical instruction. This is why I'm always asking, get to class on time, okay? Because now you don't, I have to reteach. And that to me can get very frustrating. So um, you need to be, make sure you're here on time. So anyway, the professor said, hey, you guys, I want you to go and I want you to, I want you to measure in right here, uh, one inch in this way, I'm sorry. Measure an inch here and measure an inch here with the, those two lines in, interconnect. I want you to drill a hole there. And then I want you to go over to the drill or over to the sheet metal uh, break and I want you to build, bend a 90 degree corner up on, on this piece of sheet metal. So now I know this is only, this is only paper, but he had sheet metal. And of course that guy missed the instruction for the day because the professor said, drill the hole first. Do not go and bend your corner up first. So we're all standing in line and the guy walks in late to class and he's missed the instruction. And he sees this line that's huge and long behind the drill press. And there was only one drill press and there were like 30 of us on that point. 
All right. Professor said, Professor said, in other words, it's called following directions. It even said on the paper, throw the hole first. Do not do, do not bend your corner up. Well, he, in his brilliant mind, said, ah, you know what? I'm going to go jump the line. I'm going to go over to the sheet metal uh, um, break, which bends the corners up. I have one here, and I'll show it to you later on. I bend the corner up at a 90-degree angle, just like that. And then I'm going to wait. Once I get that done, I'm going to go jump in line, and I'm going to go, and I'm going to drill the hole. Well, what he did is he came over here. And I'm going to just fold this over so it's a little bit easier to work with and see. All right, here we go. So he came over to the drill press and he proceeded to hold the material like so. And he proceeded to, uh, to drill his hole into the uh, into the piece of sheet metal with a high-speed twist drill. How many of you have used a drill press or a drill and you, uh, when the first time you used it, you didn't clamp the material down and you drilled the hole and the board got caught and spun around on there like that? Well, that's essentially what happened. Is he came here, he went and he drilled the hole and he was holding it like this. And now remember this sharp edge is right here, right? right here. So that thing spun around and shot through his thumb with a piece of sheet metal. Took him all the way to the bone. And of course, the first, uh, I saw it. I'm like, oh, oh boy, that ain't good. And then he does the fight or flight. He goes, he runs away and he goes and he hides. And I walk in there and I'm looking, he's got blood running down his hand. And I'll tell you this, I don't like blood. And uh, he, uh, I'm like, you all right? And he's kind of, oh, and I go, you need, you need to go up and tell the professor. Of course, I knew it was going to happen. The professor's going to shut the class down that day, so that's what he did. So if you get hurt, you got to say something. If you see somebody get hurt, you're morally obligated to say something. In other words, also, get to class on time and follow directions. All right. So back to the drill press. Okay, so... All right, so I am going to drill some holes. So I've got my drill press, or I got my chuck, or my drill bit chucked up, and I want to drill a hole here, a hole here. Oops, I'm sorry. So you can see it. A hole here, a hole here, and a hole here. So I got those four holes right here. Boom, boom, boom. First thing I'm going to do. Mostly, what you got to do is you got to take. Um, especially on hardwoods and metals and stuff like that, you got to use this tool. This is called a scratch awl. It's not an ice pick. It's not a nail. It's not something, gentlemen, that you show me how macho and tough you are. Ah. I'm a man. Oh. All the girls are like rolling their eyes going, wow, brilliant. There's no reason to do this, okay? And I'm not gonna lie to you, it hurts. Ow! All you gotta do, get a little tap, okay? That's all it is, just a little tap. Let me show you that again. Okay, so I'm gonna go to each of these intersection marks. Boom, boom. 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 That's all. All right. Now, drill bits or drills spin clockwise. Okay. So it spins this way. Okay. With that being said, you want to clamp the long end of the stock always on the left side of the table. Why? Well, remember me talking to you about that, that guy, the piece of metal that shot up and cut his thumb? Well, it was spinning around up there. Like I said, I asked you guys, some of you use a drill, uh, uh, electric hand drill, drill in a hole, and it shoots up the material, and it's spinning around, and it's stuck on there, right? It's flipping around. Well, if it spins, if it's clamped to the left side of the table, it hits the column here, 
And I'm okay with that. I'd rather it hit the column. If I clamp it so it's the long end is on the right side of the table, it could swing around and hit me in places I don't want to get hit. And then you all get to laugh at me because I sound like Minnie Mouse. And I get to go home and say, hi, honey, how are you doing? And she's going to say, what happened to you? Oh, I got hit in places I didn't want to get hit. Gentlemen, I know that, you know, your thing is, is you like to have that deep voice. And, you know, you see that special somebody. And you want to go up and say hi to them. And you want to, hey, hey, how are you doing? Good to see you. And, and whoever that person is that uh, you're going to go see just kind of goes, oh. Okay, I don't want you to have to go up to them and say, hi, hi, how are you doing? You wanna go on a date? Doesn't work that way very well for you. So, always clamp your material um, to the left side of the table. All right, I also use the backing board. Notice I've got this board here on here. It's okay to drill into this. Please don't drill into this. And definitely don't drill into my tabletop. You drill into my tabletop, I'm going to send you a $300 bill for a new tabletop. Okay? And the time it's going to take me also to take everything off and put it back together because this, the whole top's got to come off, and the bottom's got to come out, and it is a pain in the butt. Okay? So always use the backing board. The backing board is okay to drill into. You can see after a while, they get pretty munched up pretty badly. Okay, And I'll just replace it with a new piece of wood. It's not a big deal. Okay, now, we use the clamp. Ah. Oh. <laughs> All right, got to clamp that as hard as I can, right? No, don't clamp it as hard as you can. Okay? Gentlemen, you're the ones who are going to do it. See that lovely little dent right there that I put into my material? That don't come out. Okay? I would tell you to start sanding. This is like using a pair of vice grips. Okay? You just want it to be snug. Okay? It doesn't need to be cranked down as hard as you can. You also want to support the material underneath the material that you're drilling a hole in. So the next thing we're gonna do, we're going to set the depth stop up. And we're gonna set this up so that it, um, we set the depth stop to the proper depth. So now if you remember me talking to you about the jam nuts right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the feed lever, I'm gonna feed this down Oh, it doesn't even hit it. It stops. Well, we got a couple things we can do. One, we can come over here and we can take the, the crank the table raising lever here. Up, and we can check. Okay, yeah, we're now into the material. But I want to go all the way through. So I make sure that the tip of this comes all the way down through. It's okay to drill into this backing board here. We don't want to drill into this. Then crank it up, take the two jam nuts and turn them against each other, okay? All right. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the material and I'm gonna line up with the, that uh, hole that I drilled or the uh, punched in there. I'm going to line that up. I'm going to turn the machine on. I'm going to hold this here. And I'm going to gently let the drill bit do the work. Never stick your fingers down there. You can blow uh, your breath out of the way. Just make sure you're keeping your hair back. Line it up. Now, let's look here. I'm waiting for this to stop. Four inches away. Let's stop. Oh. 
See how nice it drilled those holes out? There's no tear out or anything. Of course, there's always that guy. There's always that guy. Ladies, you know that, you know that guy is. It has to show you how tough and how manly they are and all that stuff. Oh, I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Okay, you ready? Watch. Don't be this guy. Oh, I got to shove it in there as hard as I can. I get, oh, yeah, it's just, it's macho, manly, and all that stuff. Well, so you think. That ruins your project, okay? That lowers your grade. Look at all these tear out right here. That's not good. That's called splintering or tear out. So you don't wanna do that, okay? Slow it down, let the machine do the work. All right, so we come back to here. Now, what I am going to do is I am going to set this up and I am going to drill holes to this depth right here, this line running across here horizontally, okay? So what I do is I slide this back a little bit and I take the drill press and I take the material, it's a little hard to see there, but you can see that line okay. And now what I'm gonna do is I am going to zoom up a little. Hey, you can see I got this gap here between my jam nuts. I'm gonna break that free. I'm gonna crank the jam nut down. Okay. Lift up, turn the two jam nuts against each other. That's the most important thing to remember because a lot of students don't do that. They don't lock them together. And then the vibration from the machine causes the jam nuts to move down and then your holes are not accurate all the way around. Okay, there we go. Line it up. Once I got the long end of the stock, I can even clamp it this way if I wanted to. I'm okay with that, but I like it here. Line it up. And guess what? I can drill holes to that same depth all day till the cows and the chickens come home. And they'll all be at the same depth. Okay. Wait for it to come to a complete stop. All right. If you take your time, then you don't get a lot of tear out with it, okay? But if you try and force it, then you get, you get this. But we want it to look nice. Okay. Next drill bit. So like I told you, high-speed twist drills, which is the name of this bit right here, they are designed to drill holes and hard, soft materials and stuff like that. But sometimes, you know, let's say I wanted to go by, uh, I wanted to drill a hole with a seven eighths inch uh, uh, piece of a, or high speed twist drill. They can get more expensive. So uh, one of, 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 you know, a seven eighths inch drill bit uh, that's high speed steel, like this bit here, can, they can run you 15 to 20 bucks, you know? That's a lot of money for one drill bit, depending on uh, what it is. So now what they have is they have, also have these, called a spade bit or a speed bore. And these are designed for drilling holes in soft materials, like wood, like soft plastics, like uh, sheetrock, okay? A lot of times they use these in sheetrock because they want to get a big hole in there so that they can get in there and with a sawzall and cut out a window or something like that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> what's different about this bit though is the shank has got an octagon shape, on, or not an octagon, a hexagon shape. Well, remember telling you about the jaws of the chuck? 
they got three jaws, right? <laughs> so pretend my fingers are the jaws of the chuck. I want to install it, the, the, the jaws of the chuck. So the jaws of the chuck grab flat on three sides or, uh, of the, uh, the spade bit, okay? You don't want to clamp on the round portion. You want to stay off this. You want to stay on this portion up here, okay? So let's clamp it right there. All right, so I have to lower my drill press table down a little tiny bit. Crank, crank, open this up. Hopefully you're paying attention. Turn it on. Whoa, look at that thing. See it wobbling all over the place? You don't want to drill with that bit. Three things are possibly going to happen. One, you're going to ruin your project. Two, you're going to bend the drill bit. And three, you possibly could get hurt. And I don't want that for you. So if it's wobbling around like that, we need to stop and we need to investigate. So you can definitely see here. Look at, look at how far that thing is moving all around down here by my pencil. That's not good. So what I'm going to do, I wait for it to come to a complete stop. There we go. Sometimes that's a pain in the butt to do. And again, stay off of the smooth portion, only clamp on the hexagon portion. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Okay. A little bit of a space right in there. Tighten all three holes. One, two, three. Oh, by the way, never leave the chuck key in the chuck, okay? You leave the chuck key in the chuck and you turn it on. I don't know what it is about these things, but teeth have magnets in them. And what it does is it tends to fly out and whack and knock your teeth out. And I don't know if you've ever seen someone get their teeth knocked out, but uh, uh, it's a bloody mess, okay? So you always make sure that you um, take the uh, chuck key out of the chuck, okay? So this is the chuck. All right. Now with this drill bit and materials like this, you can get tear out really easy. And I'm gonna show you how to do it. And it's not desirable. You don't like tear out, okay? So I gotta do is set the sucker up so that it drills all the way through. As I'm setting it to here. Okay, so that's coming through. Oops. Oops. Okay. This is your brain shouldn't have done that. See what it did there. Okay. Wait until you get it where you want it. Line it up. Fire it up. Now, this is how you tear do lots of tear out. Shove it in as fast as you can. You don't want to do this. Okay, now you can see it tore out the backside. It tore it out here. Uh, if you look kind of in the hole there, you can see it's really rough on the inside. That's not good. Okay, so what you do on this, if you want to get a nice smooth hole, one, slow it down. So let's do that. We'll drill another hole right here. Uh, we'll go right over here. Most of the long left, the long end of the stock is still on the left side. Feed it in. Take your time. Good. 
especially as you're breaking through to the other side, you want to really slow it down. Wait for the bit to come to a complete stop. And this is the back side. It's a lot better. But you can still see that it's got a little bit of a raised edge on it. So I'm going to show you another method. As long as you can get to both sides of the material, sometimes you can't. Like if you're drilling a hole in a wall, then odds are you're not going to see the other side of the wall or the uh, inside portion of the wall. But one of the other things you can do is we can set the depth stop here. Do this. I'm going to set the depth stop so that these points right here are over half of the way through. So I like that right there. So I'm going to crank down my depth stop, raise the depth stop up, lock them both in place. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to proceed to drill the hole. And I'm going to take my time, feeding it in. Wait for it to come to a complete stop. Open it up. Okay. I didn't go all the way through. If you look around the other side, there is the pilot hole that it drills, the guide hole. Line that up, clamp that down, come on over here, line it up so it's where it needs to be. Lift it up. Do not start it on the material. You saw what happened when I started it on the material. Threw it, right? Not good. Okay, and I'm gentle. You'll feel it give away. Okay. Wait for it to come to a complete stop. And... Sometimes it gives you these little pine wood, um, <laughs> I like to call them lifesavers. But you can see that it drills a much smoother hole on both sides if you come back to the other side with it. So it's nice and smooth here. This one here, this one's got a little bit of a, a raised edge. Uh, you can, I got a little bit of tear out. I probably could sand that, could be okay, but this is really nice here. This is the other side of the hole, oh, it's really nice there. All right, so um, I kind of rushed this today, so um, yeah. All righty, so let me stop the recording. <laughs>